Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Casey the Jeweler and today I'll be starting a new ring. So this ring is going to be a man's ring that's going to have a very special cut onyx. It's like two pieces of onyx that are going to be set together into one ring. But first I have to start building the foundation of it. So this new like type of video series I'm starting with is like a kind of like a vlog style I guess if you will. Um, like a I'm showing like how I design rings in real time. It's going to be like, I guess going over all the super nitty gritty details of how I like actually build the ring. Anyway, uh, so bear with me as I <laughs> start it. So at this part, I'm just going to be working on all the lines and things like that. But anyway, I just thought like I'd chat for a bit and you can watch how I build like the first portion of it. It's probably not the most exciting part, but it's actually the most important because if I get my lines wrong, we call them curves, but if I get those off and they're not correct, or if the proportions are off, then everything's off and I have to start over. So this, what I mean is like, I'm just, I'm actually just building the skeleton of the ring, if that makes sense. And then um, from there, I make it into a solid. The middle here is like got a, a gem, a 3D model gem that I use as a model for all the gems that I set with usually. Now for this onyx, I'm going to build it myself because I'm going to actually have it like a lapidary artist like cut it for this ring. And so I have to like create a certain way, a certain angle for him to recreate once the ring's finished. So I'm just trying to figure out how thick do I want this ring? Cause I don't want, I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be good size. It's going to be white gold and it's going to hold some rubies and rubies and diamonds later on, but I don't really want it to be super thick because sometimes they, they get to be kind of uncomfortable. So that's kind of when I decided I was going to do like more like 1.5 at the bottom and then it gradually tapers up to like four millimeters, almost five at the top. So anyway, I um, have to remember that Onyx, it needs to be no less than two millimeters. So this is kind of when I start doing building it at three millimeters. This is the part where I'm just kind of fiddling and like making the shape how I want it. Sometimes it needs like some extra help and like the angles, it kind of, the point is I can't really make it too similar to a signet ring because otherwise it starts looking like a class ring and this isn't going to be a class ring. It is an engagement ring, but it's like a ring that like just most people can wear that's not doesn't have all those lettering and stuff it doesn't scream engagement ring or something like that so anyways yes so recently i was uh i checked out this book or i bought it i didn't check it out but i wish i bought it on amazon instead but it was way cheaper <laughs> instead of barnes and noble but i wanted it now so i was like i want it so yeah, I, I'm so glad I got it because I actually really enjoy it. I've been getting into a lot of um, interior decorating lately, this past couple months really. And I've learned a lot from YouTube about it. There's just, I don't know, it's like, it's something I've never really tried to do before or make the place a little bit more nice to look at. So I'm trying to like make my living area just more just intentionally not just aesthetically pleasing, but more beautiful to look at because I've always had just the bare minimum. And I, I used to live just off the bare minimum and the cheapest furniture and the cheapest couch. And I even like used to just sit in the camp chair for months before I finally got a nice recliner. But that's when I started off. And my first year, I did have just an air mattress and a camp chair. And then I watched on my laptop for movies. 
it, it was good though. I have good memories. <laughs> but yes, super bare minimum, but that's fine. Anyways, after that, I eventually got a really nice bed that I still have now. And I got a nicer chair. I don't have it anymore. I got a newer one. But now I started to prioritize just making everything a little bit more beautiful because I learned that it just helps the mind. First, I wanted to get rid of the clutter because I have this, I have, okay, the real reason why I get wanted to get interior decorate as well is to get rid of my clutter because, man, I just have, I, I really create clutter wherever I go for some reason. I'm always collecting papers and stuff and I just feel like I'm going to use it or I'm going to get to it later. I always do. I used to take pictures of my, of my receipts and like put it through this app called uh, Fetch and then I get like um, dis um, gift cards or something but then I stopped doing that after a while because I couldn't even keep up with the receipts I was collecting. I would put it off and then I'd be like oh I have a hundred receipts I have to take pictures of and I was kind of that was really annoying but like, okay. might do it again later I don't know. But I would at least like to have them organized. So, anyway. So, yeah. It's more, it's not just receipts I collect, but just things I plan to donate. Or now it's gotten to the point I have packages that I'll order and then I just leave it there and I don't open it forever until I know, like, I will use it or I am gonna get to it, which is weird because I usually open that stuff immediately but lately I haven't because I don't know now for the furniture I got that is I am leaving it packaged until I clean up this like one area of the, my spare bedroom whatever because it well my bench looks great but like nobody sees <laughs> what's really there and I've been told that my bench looks a lot bigger on video than it does in real life, which is funny. It's really small. Like, it's 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 smaller than, like, an office desk. <laughs> I might eventually upgrade to a bigger bench, maybe. I do like that bench, but... Yeah, I've had it, I had it for about eight years now, I think. It's been great. However, behind it is looks like... My shop area looks like a dumpster, <laughs> so... I I usually just kind of do focus on what's functional because more important. I usually just focus on what's functional because that's more, well, more practical. However, it makes it hard to just work or go in there because it looks, like I said, terrible. So, except my bench area. That's nice and familiar and stuff. Which I need to upgrade my small tools too, eventually, hopefully. I don't know when, but I usually, I usually make what I have work. Most of my tools I have is from when I used to be in trade school. I still like use them. So, I eventually should get an upgraded like saw blade and like, or saw frame I mean, and these other, th these tiny mini tools that I use. So, anyway, back to interior decorating. My idea was to kind of just bring more warm colors and like orange and like kind of a beach. All right, my cat is upset with me. I'll be right back. Come here, come here. All right, so back to interior decorating. Yes, yeah, so I'm planning like kind of a not a beach theme, but just I like the colors of the beach and sort of incorporate that in there. But bring mostly orange in there. Anyway, I've talked about it before some of my other talks, but anyways. So ideally what I was trying to do initially was incorporate more minimalism. Now what's cool about minimalism is that it goes actually it's more like it goes beyond just how you live or how the interior space that you live in and don't have as many things but 
it also goes into like all your digital files as well and just and especially your time so i really i really like that about it because the idea was to tackle my clutter problem and to well manage it to the point that it doesn't bother me as much anymore once and for all however the space I live now is very gray, and so it made me kind of sad. And I'm more than I should be, so now I'm trying to make things more beautiful again. And then, because that way, it'll make me want to do the things that I want to do. That's the point, I mean. Just to incorporate just things that make me feel good. And at first I didn't think it was important, but... As I did more research on it, and I didn't realize how much impact it can make you. Especially if, like, you have a place that's just unpleasant to live in. It kind of breaks your spirit in a way. And so, but versus a really beautiful environment, you want to stay in it and, like, do things. And just lifts you up. Complete opposite, so... I think we all have, I think we all have, have to do that for ourselves, really. We should do it. Not that we have to, but I think we should. And I wish I, well, there wasn't a whole lot I could do my first year, my first apartment back then. But I could have made a little more effort, making it more, like, I guess comfortable, but I didn't. <laughs> I had I had what I needed, so. And honestly, I all I would always like enjoy the food and stuff that I make. And that'd be something. And what's and what's interesting though about the jewelry industry or working in it in the shop environment is actually most of the time you usually do not have any windows to look out in. It's kind of like a warehouse, but a more cozier warehouse, if that makes sense. And now it's a lot of like gray walls and stuff. Um, sometimes there's cubicles, sometimes your benches are right next to the other jewelers or designers. I'm used to having my computer and right next to my bench. So it's, I think that's actually more efficient because other places you have to actually go to a separate room for the computers and then go back to your bench. Sometimes there's another floor and that's I think that's inefficient as well. It's, but even though like it's kind of stark and like there's no windows and it's just a lot of artificial light, which is what I, I need to work under. I need a lot of bright light to work under. Not to live in to relax in. I prefer yellow light or amber light because I would just have sensitive eyes. But it's funny. I, I like super bright light for working, but when it comes to relaxing, I prefer the opposite. But um. Well, there's a reason for it because like otherwise the super fluorescent light is a little too stimulating and if you have that in your living environment it gets kind of like you can't relax as much so at least for me i, I don't but it's okay in the kitchen and in the shop area because i'm basically just doing stuff that requires like a lot of concentration usually in those places so it's fine but what I enjoy the most is other people like when I've told them like yeah I'm used to that I'm used to working in a cave basically and there's usually no windows and stuff but they'll find it really uncomfortable like what uh. and I just think to myself well I have like I work with so much beauty and with my hands like I work with some of the most beautiful gems that comes from the earth Kind of like how it's very healing therapeutic when people garden they work with nature's beauty that way well i get to work that way as well but the gems and the metal come from way way further deep into the earth way further than what plants and trees can go so i work with just well nature in general and i think that really like offsets all the uh I guess a dry like working environment because it didn't really didn't bother me because I had beauty staring at me in the face or looking through a microscope a tiny tiny micro no, tiny version of it <laughs> so anyways 
anyway so back to the book i um bought it was definitely the opposite of what i've been usually just pursuing for like a beautiful space i've been really into ikea stuff and the scandinavian interior decorating and how just simple and cozy it is and how clean and how um i guess i guess i don't know. I can't think of another word for it but just the peaceful really and i think oh i can actually feel like i could be productive here if i had a living room like that but at the same time though it started to feel like when i when i had some similar things where i was able to create some spaces similar sort of i didn't have like it all set up but just enough to where i i need to do what i have to it basically started feeling like i needed some sort of inspiration that wasn't trying to look on Pinterest or social media in general. And I mean, I enjoy Pinterest a lot. Um, Instagram, not so much anymore. I used to, but Instagram just isn't quite the same. So I started looking into maximalism, the complete opposite, <laughs> which is hilarious. But when it's done well, it's actually fun to look at. Now, I wouldn't have that done in my space entirely, but I am inspired off of it to the point I want to bring in more color. And that's what I liked about it is all the color. I mean, that's kind of why, I, that's my favorite part of being an artist is all the color. In fact, that's my one complaint with working with jewelry is that I don't think there's enough color to work with on a daily basis. Now, there are tons of gems out there. I mean, like several. So there's all kinds of colors that way. But the jewelry industry usually focuses on probably 10 different gems, or at least five. Usually just, I guess the more higher end jewelry, they even have less colors options, less colors to choose usually. Occasionally I do see them be a little bit more adventurous and have like a very colorful necklace or a super colorful cocktail ring or bracelet but not always so anyway so with this maximalism book it's called more is more is more and um every single page on that book or every single room was just dropped dead gorgeous it was just fun to look at except for maybe two rooms or one room specifically this particular room i did not like was kind of weird only because like Everything didn't, like the colors like went together, but like not the shapes of the chairs. So, for example, I like the shells in this room. They had this sort of glistening gold, um, but textured gold shelves. But it's not just the shells themselves, but inside. It would have black outline, but textured gold. And it looked like what, that'd be awesome for like a bar or something. To hold like all the um, wine bottles or the drinks and stuff. Like that'd be kind of cool. But it was a living room, so it felt out of place. But that was the most like attractive portion of that room. The rest of the room had these kidney shaped chairs that looked uncomfortable. Like either they were made out of plastic or stone. So they, they look terrible to sit in, but also kind of weird to look at. And then they had this other chair that was, looked like it was made out of, it was um, the shape like a spine or spinal cord. And it just looks super uncomfortable to sit on. That was the only page of the book I did not like. And there was this other room that I liked, but it was not really about the room. Like it had this bright pink, um, wall and then a couple little red chairs but it had a beautiful painting in the center now like i could tell they picked up the painting mostly just because it um it goes along with some of the gold accents i don't think they picked it because of how it looked really but i did appreciate that they um i did appreciate that they uh i guess picked it like for that room I guess but I it actually was really pretty it was it looked like a, a beautiful hallway but the people walking around kind of look like ghosts or something 
but they were just looking at paintings inside the painting. I don't know, I just, I really liked it. So I was like, huh, that's unusual. I don't know if they did this intentionally or maybe they, maybe it was, perhaps, I don't know. So, anyways, I have this, I have this idea to, for my bedroom to have like a, um, uh, this cool, they have some cool curtains now. I wish they had more options, but they have some curtains that look like murals, which I think is really cool and great because not everybody can have murals. Most people don't anymore. And I've always appreciated murals. Oh, man, they just super elevate the space to like regalness. It's not a word, but <laughs> it makes it feel regal or royalty even. So, but having like a giant curtain that's a mural, I think is the next best thing. But it's got like these vine leaves and goes over stone. So it makes you feel like you're in Italy or something or whatever. So I really want that for sure. And another one that looks like the beach. And this other one, it had these beautiful like arches. I was looking for some sort of inspired stained glass look to it, but I, it looked kind of like too dark, I guess for the dining room. So I was kind of like eh, on the fence about it. And now I'm thinking I might just go with like nature and just trees or something. But I guess I'm still looking. I haven't found the right like blackout curtains for that. So, but yeah, that's my other idea is to, oh, I, I have a china cabinet finally after all this time, but it's still, it's empty right now. I haven't actually put my tea sets away. I, oh yeah. So I have like three different, like nice china sets. So. That's a lot, because I inherited them <laughs> from my grandmother, my great-grandmother, my mom. So that's why I have them, and I mean a lot. So I do like to display them, or I will, eventually. The one for my mom was this, like, yellow tea set. I really like. I use that one every day, though. It's, I think it's from the 70s that got popular. It's um, False Craft, one of their collections, but it was the Village Collection. It is discontinued, so if I want to expand on it, I'd have to go to eBay to get more. I have plenty, though, so I don't really want to get any more than that. So, anyways. But, um, and then the other one for my grandmother is this white and gold rimmed china set. Now it's kind of delicate and I notice it kind of breaks easily. So I did use one of the cups to make this fancy Italian hot chocolate. That was really good. It's super thick, but it's, I don't know, it tastes great. And it felt super regal just sipping that out of that gold rim cup. So, but I tried to look it up and I don't have much information on it tried but it's like anyway the one for my great grandmother though that one's probably my favorite which I didn't expect um this one is Wedgwood and it's from England which is really really cool so and I have majority of that said it kind of um what I like about it, it's got miniature figures like sculpted outside of the cup it's blue and white and it looks like uh, it, was, it was definitely inspired off of ancient greek sculptures and ancient roman architecture as well and it, man it's just super fancy and it, it's a i have a teapot and teacups and coffee cups and a coffee pot but it's got a chip on the end of it but now oh man i really like that so but yes oh yeah so after I finally got the shape, this is what the ring started out to be. And it's, I have to like kind of mess with the shape a bit more to create more of like a rounder look to it. Cause right now, like the shape is good. Shape is what I wanted, but it's a little stiff. And it's definitely gonna need to be a little wider. But yes, I definitely had to make it a certain way because you don't want it to be too thin because it looks a little too dainty but at the same time you don't you don't want it to look like a signet class ring either and 
So it was kind of balance or basic shape that I was kind of looking for. And I also had to keep in mind because the black onyx was going to be this kind of specific shape with a slash through it and the stones are going to be towards in the middle of it. And I couldn't just like, I had to really like think everything through as I go. And as I'm building, I usually just kind of put the parts together, but this one I had to, I mean, I usually do this, but this one I had to really just picture it all at once and go from there. So yeah, this is usually how I uh, create a man's ring, at least the basic shape of it or the shape of a ring. Uh, for engagement rings, I do a little, my process a little different. Um, then again, it depends on what style it is, so. I have to make sure the shape is where I need it to. And um, so I appreciate everybody for watching this video. And I hope that it was like relaxing at least. <laughs> so, but yeah, this is my first video of this uh, type of vlog style jewelry designer series I'm doing. And I'm just walk, kind of, not just walking everybody through it, but just kind of wanted to include everybody in as I'm working on this ring. So I got more videos later to show how it goes. And so anyways, um, I will uh, see everybody soon. And uh, thanks for watching.